So we've been talking a lot about uh, trigonometric identities and how they relate to the equivalent hyperbolic identities. You know, and you have noticed there are a lot of similarities. So sine squared plus cos squared is 1 becomes cos squared minus sine squared is 1. Um, sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x, pretty much identical is sine 2x is 2 sine x cos, cos x. 1 plus tan squared x is set, set squared x becomes 1 minus tan squared x is set squared x. So they're, they're almost identical, but sometimes you have to change the sign from a plus to a minus. Um, and what Osborne's rule tells you is, is sort of how to decide whether you uh, need to, um, to to put a minus in place for plus or vice versa. And I'm just going to tell you what that is and then also explain why it works. So um, what it says really is that if you ever have, if you've got a, a trigonometric identity, you just replace sine x with sine x and cos x with cos x but if anywhere there's a factor of sine squared uh, that's when is that's exactly what sorry sine squared that's exactly when you need a minus sine squared so here it was sine squared so that became minus sine squared whereas in this one it was just two sine x cos x there was no sine squared so we didn't have to put a minus in um, here one plus tan squared is sec squared um, there's not immediately a sine squared there, but there sort of is, and if we rewrite everything in terms of uh, sine and cosine, you know, 1 plus tan squared is 1 plus sine squared x over cos squared x, that's 1 over cos squared x. So actually it's this sine squared x that's inside the tan, uh, so when I change it I'll get 1 minus sine squared x over cos squared x is 1 over cos squared x, and that gives us this identity, 1 minus tan squared x is set squared x. Okay, so it's a, it's a good rule of thumb there, you know, it's swap sine and cos with sine and cos, uh, and if you get a sine squared factor, make it minus sine squared, be careful about these ones that are implied. So why does this work? Well, it works because there's a remarkable connection between trigonometric and hyperbolic functions uh, through complex numbers. So if we look at uh, cos of i times x, where i is the square root of minus 1, and use the definition of cos, we'd get e to the i x plus e to the minus i x divided by uh, 2. Um, now, e to the i x is uh, cos x plus i sine x, and e to the minus i x is cos x plus i sine of minus x. So I've got all of that uh, divided by 2. And that's just using the polar form of the of the complex number. Uh, so if I've got a complex number here with uh, modulus r and argument theta, then z is r e to the i theta. Um, and we can also see that in its uh, ordinary form, we've got um, so this would be r cos theta and r sine theta. So z is also r cos theta plus r sine theta times i, and um, so here we've just got uh, r is 1, and instead of theta I've got x, so I get uh, z is cos theta plus uh, i sine theta, sorry, z is uh, cos x plus i sine x. Um, now, uh, we also need to know a little bit about sine and cos uh, here then, oh I'm sorry, in here I should have a, this should say, this should say cos of minus x. Okay, now we need to know that sine of minus x is minus sine of x and that cos of minus x is just cos of x. That's to say that cos is an even function and sine is an odd function. If you think about the graphs you'll see that that's true. Um, so this becomes cos x plus i sine x and cos of minus x is just cos of x and i sine of minus x then becomes minus i sine of x all divided by 2 so that cancels and that cancels. I've got 2 cos x over 2, so that's just uh, cos x. So there we go. Cos of i times x is cos of x. And similarly, if I look at sine of i times x, that's e to the i x minus e to the minus x, uh, i x divided by 2, uh, that's cos of x plus i sine of x minus cos of minus x plus i sine of minus x and again using this even and odd properties of um, cos and sine uh, respectively this becomes cos x plus i sine x minus cos x and then I've got minus minus i sine x so plus 
i sine x here all divided by 2. This time the cos is cancelled and I've got 2i sine x over 2. So that's uh, i times sine x. So uh, shine of i x equals i sine x. Now, it's worth noting as well that we can write these uh, round the other way. So actually if I took this identity cos of i x equals cos of x and I replace x with i times x, what we get is cos of i times i x is cos of i x. Um, so this is cos of minus x equals cos of i x. And again, we've noted when we looked at the graphs of uh, cos that cos, like cos, is an even function. So this is just uh, cos of x uh, equals cos of i x. So um, so alongside this one, I can also have that uh, cos of i x is uh, cos uh, of x, and similarly for sine of i x equals i sine x. If I replace x with i x, I get sine of i times i x is i sine uh, i x. So this is sine of uh, minus x. I squared is minus one. That's i sine of i x. Sine, um, sorry, shine like sine is an odd function, so this is minus shine of x equals i sine of i x. Then dividing 3 by i and swapping the sides, we get sine of i x equals minus 1 over i shine x, and uh, minus 1 over i, if you times top and bottom uh, by i, gives us minus i over minus 1, uh, which is just uh, i, so this is. Uh, sine of uh, i x equals uh, i uh, shine of x. Um, so this works the other way around as well. Sine of i x equals i uh, times shine of x. So why does this make Osborne's rule true? So we've now got these results as well. Um, so Osborne's rule works then because if I take a, a trig identity, let's say I take uh, this one, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1, and replace x with i x, I get sine squared i x plus cos squared i x is identically equal to 1. Now, um, cos of i x is just, uh, oh sorry, I put an i in here, That's, that shouldn't be there, that should just be, sorry, sine of i x is i sine x and cos of i x is just cos x. So if I uh, have cos squared of i x, that's just cos squared of x, there's no, no sign change at all there, that's just cos squared of x. But when I have a sine squared of i x, I end up with this squared, which is i squared sine squared of x, and that i squared then is minus 1, and that gives us the uh, minus one factor that we that we uh, said we only introduce if I've got a sine squared term because replacing um, uh, sine of i x with i sine of x when I've got that squared I get i squared sine of x. Um, whereas if you look at one of these, let's so say uh, this one here doing the same thing, um, you would get uh, i sine of two x is two i shine of x, cos of x, and the i's cancel and it's, and it's fine. So, um, Osborne's rule then uh, and uh, explains there through uh, a, a curious and really interesting link uh, between the hyperbolic and the uh, and the trigonometric functions through complex numbers.